Okay, we're recording. I see it says recording, and I believe it. Hi, this is Jim Ziegler, the Alpha Dog. we got the local search group out of Houston, Texas here today. We're going to talk about how to sell cars, how to make money, how to use technology, how to use the Internet. We are going to rock and roll. I've got three of the smartest people in all of Houston on, on the broadcast <laughs> with us right now. And uh, Introduce yourselves. Hi, Jim Flint. Hi, Jim Ziegler. How are you doing? Uh, Jim Flint, president and founder of Local Search Group. Fantastic. Uh, and, and what is Local Search Group? We're a digital I mean, marketing missing, company. Missing children on milk, milk boxes or something? What? <laughs> no, we, we're not an executive recruiter. We are not looking for lost people. We're actually helping car dealers find car deals. Uh, we come from a car dealership and basically the people that work in the company have relevant retail experience, self-included. I used to be an e-commerce director, so spent about three years doing that. I uh, figured out there was a really good way to do things online, digitally. Uh, even wrote a book about it. A book? Car Dog Millionaire. Book. There you go. Okay, Car Dog Millionaire. Could anybody buy that book? Yes, it's Put available it on Amazon. Right over there, do it again. <laughs> Jordan's got it. Better than white. He's our marketing manager. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Jordan, where can they buy the book? You know all the details, right? I do. Buy it on Amazon. Yeah, we have it in three formats right now: paperback, hardback, and um, digital download on Kindle. And then we're in the process of getting the audiobook, so that should be here in the next month or so. So, Car Dog Millionaire. So, so I could probably learn to be successful if I read that book. You Maybe. can. Jim promises a money-back guarantee if you don't find at least one thing that you can take back to your dealership and implement and help you sell more cars. So we're seeing and true to it. So far, nobody's asked for their money back. So well, that's that's Jim so, Flynn. <laughs> yeah. Jim, Jim's been a friend of mine for a long time, and I'm, I'm really pleased to have you guys here. And, and by the way, Jim is going to be one of the featured speakers at what event? The Internet, Internet Battle, Battle Plan. Plan. Internet Battle Plan. As we got to get Rachel on board with that. I'm oh, going to be there. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be great. Okay. Let's say www.internetbattleplan.com. Okay, check it out on the, on the sidebar on the on the bottom right, internetbattleplan.com. You're one of the featured speakers. It's, it's, it, that event is produced by Jim and Debbie Ziegler, my my smoking hot trophy wife and I. We put that thing together ourselves. And who have we got there in box number two? Vanna White. Jordan. <laughs> Jordan. <laughs> oh, I'm the Vanna White. Sorry. My boxes are different. I'm Jordan Hancock. I'm the marketing manager for Local Search Group. And I'm posting down here. I did the Vanna White car. Or, I mean, excuse me, car dog millionaire book. So here's the link to Amazon for everyone tuning in. If you want to check it out, you can purchase it there. Fantastic. Who are you? What do you do? <laughs> you know, I ask myself that every day. Are you just part, <laughs> no, just are you just part of the, the Jim um, Flynn posse? What? what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I'm the marketing manager. So I handle um, a lot with the, I'm not so much client facing, but I handle everything with the company. So doing Jim's speaking engagements, like he's speaking at Internet Battle Plan. He just spoke at this Car Biz Today conference. They had an inaugural conference in Atlanta, which we had a great time at. We spoke about the book and full session. People were bringing in chairs, so we had a lot of fun there. Um, I handle a lot of the marketing for the book right now. It's been taking up a lot of time. That's been really fun. Um, pretty much A to Z, pretty much okay, everything. Well, let me tell you, call me after the broadcast. I know a lot about marketing books. Yeah. Okay. I've read a, yeah, a few. I, this is I've my first. A few, yeah, and, yeah. And, you know, I, I will. And I've, I've advised my friend Sean V. Bradley. And, you know, Sean's got that book, uh, Winning mm -hmm. the Game of Googleopoly. I bought it. It's a good book. A legitimate bestseller. You know, everybody, I got a bestseller. Yeah, your, your grandmother, who else? You know, but, <laughs> you know, you know but it, I think you get some props for that. <laughs> yes. Oh, by the way, the little hands in the corner here, I'm going to give Jim some, some applause. Yeah, that's See the good. little that applause? Good. You can give people applause. And, um, of course, it's only polite to give me the host most of them. But still, <laughs> and people we'll make sure you win at the finish line. Yeah, yeah. People, people, can, people can collect money for those. 
And uh, Rachel L. Chadwick. Now, I, I see you have an initial there today. You had three names last time I looked. Yes, sir. I do go by all three names. <laughs> <laughs> Women with three names are important. <laughs> it is very important. You know, <laughs> I'm Rachel Lyles Chadwick. I'm the VP of Key Accounts. I have been with Jim for five over five years now since the be beginning of the company, actually. And it's been great. And Jim, Rachel's a closer. Our first uh, client we went out to in Beaumont, a Toyota dealer out there, Kinzel Toyota. Uh, she walked in and um, we had a meeting. We talked about it for a little while. Guy said we had a deal and, and she stopped talking. She knew, <laughs> she knew enough that that was all she needed. Yeah, yeah just shut up. <laughs> well, I am so pleased I'm coming to your hometown. I can't wait. Well, yeah, I saw fun. you speak was about five years ago when I had just started. So I can't wait to see you again. Well, I'll tell you what, Debbie and I have been, this is battle plan number 19. Oh, wow. You know, we've done, I can't believe we've done 19 of them. They're getting larger. I got 20 speakers on stage and including myself. Let's talk about, you want to talk about the book first? Or you want to talk about your services first? What, what's more important, Jim? Well, well, I think we should start out with a trivia question. That is actually in the book. It's chapter 14. Do you have a copy yet, Jim? You know, I don't. You, oh my God. The alpha dog needs it. We got to get you a car dog copy. If, if we don't have one before the event, the internet battle plan, we'll certainly get it. Can you see what it says up there on the screen? I, I certainly can. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, who earned the title of being the world's greatest retail salesman in the Guinness Book of World Records? A, Joe Girard. B, Zig Ziglar, C, Jim Ziglar, or D, <laughs> David Kane, which is totally unbelievable. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay. Who owns the title for being the world's greatest salesman? Joe Girard, Zig Ziglar, Jim Ziglar, or David Kane? Now, I know the answer. Rachel, do you know the answer? I do know the answer because I read the book. Okay. But initially, I thought it, it was C. But then I was found out I was wrong. That it was A, Joe Girard, who back in the day before the internet was selling more than a, a car a day. And he's actually listed, as it says, in Guinness Book of World Records. Uh, things have, things have kind of changed. They sell as many cars, you know, in China, as it details out in the book, you know, in one month at certain dealerships as he sold during the entire year. So as you as you look at it, Really, if you look at the time period he came from, he did it the, if you will, old fashioned way. But there's new, more efficient ways to get to market, to bring deal, you know, customers in and to, to sell cars. And what would that be? Well, I think, you know, one of the ones we talk about a lot is chat. When people come in and ask you a question, a lot of the dealers I work with, they think they have to answer the, deal, the customer's question by referencing. I mean, a lot of times people ask, is the car in stock? Pretty simple, straightforward question. In fact, I'd say most consumers think they already know that you're gonna tell them yes. But what a lot of people do at the dealership is they'll look on the Wi-Fi and try to identify that particular unit online. And it may take 30 seconds for you to find that car. And so ironically, the bridge between the old school and the new school is actually a piece of paper with the doc sheet of the cars you have in stock that you acquired in the morning. Don't take 30 seconds to answer a question that should fundamentally be yes. If they're asking if you have the car in stock, I wouldn't waste two minutes to go out to find it or put my hands on it. I'd look at my doc sheet, see if it was listed in the AM and run with it and tell them, yes, I've got the car that you're looking for and move the conversation along. As you know, Jim, a lot of people come in with mistrust to begin with. Last thing you wanna delay on is a positive answer to an obvious question. Yeah, exactly. Now, a large percentage of the deals today in a car dealership are, are started on the internet. You know, we used to have something called the road to the sale, you know, meet and greet the customer, establish a relationship all the way through, deliver and follow up. And, and today the customer's starting out on step three or step four of that process because they've already done it uh, technologically before they ever meet us. Is it fair to say? Yeah, it's absolutely. Um, they come in with, as you know, loaded with information. And so when they when they ask you a question, too, and I, you know, Sean talks about this a lot, and I think it's a big deal. If they do ask questions that you may not be comfortable to giving the answers to price being one of them, 
you at least have to respond to and acknowledge. I know I've, I've done the AIM training where it's acknowledge, ignore, move on. I don't know how you feel about that, but I think fundamentally you got to, I don't think that's necessarily the way to go anymore. Uh, Gen Y is kind of taking us to a different place. And what you want to do, I think, is at least at a minimum give a range or at least at a minimum, if they're on a particular unit, say, hey, that's this car is priced at this amount. You can see it clearly in front of you online. Be consistent with your exchange of information. I mean, that's certainly one way to go. Well, you know, we, we mentioned earlier, um, and this is the second time we've done a broadcast. We mentioned earlier that, that Google is the battlefield. You know that, that that everything starts with the search engines. Everything starts with the consumer saying, "Hey, I think I'd like a car." Yes, I'd like a car. Ooh, I saw one on the shop, shopping center parking lot. Oh, my neighbor's got a car. Oh shit, I gotta have a car. And then, yeah. oh, next thing you know, they're 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 looking on Google. They're looking on online. And 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 what happens next? Well, it's funny. Like you you would think that they would call in or they would submit a lead, and I'm I'm here to tell you. That's happening less and less frequently. What I think happens next, and it's one of the chapters in the book, they use the wisdom of the masses to look at how the rest of the public perceives you from a reputation perspective. And then they start eliminating you. They don't want to go. They, time is so precious. People don't want to go to five dealerships anymore and negotiate and, and battle through that. They want to go to a trusted resource and they'll rely on other people for their wisdom. And then they'll come in based on that wisdom to your location. And if you believe the stats, it's either 1.6, something less than two. I heard somebody throw out there 1.2 visits <laughs> per person for a dealership to buy a car. So <laughs> closing ratios have to go to 50%. I mean, Jordan Jordan worked at Sewell Lexus up in Dallas and she- Did you really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did. It was a great experience. Sewell was one of the most customer friendly early on dealers in the world from yeah. For everything I've seen in radio, Carl Sewell customers for life. Is that where, is that the environment you came out of where you, you actually treat yes. the people well and tell the truth? And all? <laughs> yeah, definitely. And, and I actually, it was funny because I worked there for a year, you know, not only selling a luxury brand, but working for a company like Sewell who really puts a lot of value on that. And I went and bought my Jeep from this new dealership by the airport and I <laughs> got a totally different experience. So, um, you know, I value what they do, and they obviously have a lot of loyal customers. But you know, times are changing with, and you know, the company's changing their strategy as well. And it's hard when you have a competitor down the road. People, especially my generation, millennials, it's all about price. You know, so that's another deal. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Jennifer Briggs just sent me a private message. I was telling her to get on Blab. She she's out there in the audience somewhere. Yeah, but Hi, um, Jennifer. Yeah, I don't. I, is, she, is she with us? I don't think she's got with us yet. She'll catch up. Okay. Yeah, but customer experience. Um, you met you mentioned the review sites, and I'm a big believer that you've got Google is the review site. You know, there's a lot of private companies out there. Cars.com, Edmunds.com. I thought. Now, this is my personal opinion. Did everybody hear that? Um, Rachel, did you hear me say personal opinion? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> the people at Yelp are criminals. <laughs> I'm going to give you some props. <laughs> I, I might be wrong. Hey, Jim. I, I mean, I'm pretty neutral when it comes to effectiveness of mediums, but I just don't think you can buy Yelp as a dealer. There's Their, their practices are untenable. I mean, you just, it's terrorist tactics. It's unbelievable. So they remind me of the old, old, old movies you used to watch on TV with all the gangsters where they were selling the protection racket. Where, you know, <laughs> if you pay us, we won't hurt you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. That's Yelp. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and I, I mean, I've studied it and I've written blogs about it. I've seen some of your blogs about it. There's no way to discern whether or not they're going to give credibility to a review. It doesn't matter in, in terms of volume. It doesn't matter in terms of depth. It doesn't matter in terms of geography. So I'm not looking to, I don't want to game a system. I just want to understand it. And there's no rationale to it whatsoever. And I understand you tremendously pay them and you get a good review. So. No, but 
even then it's it's arbitrary they, there's no real like benefit on the other side i've i've had guys i've said hey look we're down to the last resort let's pay the monthly fee and see if they can if it twists or turns a different direction and through relentless tracking i found no difference between what we did before and what we did after and so some of my dealer clients and partners have become more outspoken you know within the community like guys we understand they're on the iphone with apple based on that relationship I'm all for reviews because I think they are valuable to consumers. But at the end of the day, it's got to be more about things that are more relevant and trustworthy. Like you seem to find more regularly on things like Google, to your point. Google Google is, is the benchmark. Um, yeah. I like dealer rater. I really do uh, as, as the private companies go. And, um, you know, I really distrust Edmonds. I, I don't put a lot of stock in cars.com, but then that's me personally. A lot of people like those people, but Google is the benchmark. Google, Google is the universal. It, it, everybody goes there, everybody looks there. Um, what's your thoughts, Rachel? No, you're exactly right. I mean, Google search is over 70% of the market. I mean, mm -hmm. it's where people are. It's where people are looking. It's, it's, it's and it's trusted as well. People know that they can go onto a Google review and it's going to be a, a more legitimate response than we see in other places. It's, reviews it's, are incredible. I mean, it's, it's, people make their decisions based on reviews, true? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Oh, don't serve me. Come on. Man. I'm so sorry. I can't help myself. Yeah. I, okay. I know I'm an old guy. I, I've got underwear older than all three of you, but still. Well, you, you, you mentioned, we, I mean, we're in Houston. I'm born and raised in Texas. Everybody's okay. here, right? What can I say? Now, uh, Rachel, does this local search group, I mean, you got the name search in your name. Yeah. Is that part of what you do is help dealers get found, help them? help them get uh, conversions, help them, help them sell cars. You know, you know, being, being on the internet doesn't assure anything because if you're not on page one of Google, you're invisible. You're exactly right. And search is, I would say it's the core of what we do. I mean, we, we, all of the products that we have and all of the services that we offer are to help customers find our dealers. Um, you know, the quickest way to be found is with search, you know, with Google and, and Yahoo and Bing search. So when the customer is looking for what you have, you're going to show up and you're going to show up towards the top and you're going to show up, you know, with a high frequency. We also, you know, work with SEO so that customers are going to be able to find you organically. You know, search you can, engine optimization. Yes, sir. So again, we're back to our search. We buzzword around a bit here. <laughs> SEO, search engine optimization, <laughs> making the most of your search engine results, right? The right yeah. ad words and, Hey, have you guys seen Spy Fu? Yes. yes. Yeah, I think I so. love Spy Fu. <laughs> Spy Fu. Anybody that's that's listening, uh, Spy Fu. S P Y F U dot com. Now, I like Kung Fu, only Spy Fu. I'm gonna tell you what. If you go to Spy Fu and put in your competitor's website address, it'll tell you their key search words, what works, what doesn't work, how much money they're spending. Uh, and if you buy the paid version of it, it even expands that beyond the top five or ten. I mean, it's spy foo is incredible. That's s p y f u dot com. It is incredible. You know, got it. So, what do you what do you think? Um, let's go back to Jordan for a second. Jordan Jordan's been a little paralyzed there. She's. <laughs> you know. No, I'm I'm listening. I was Watch looking up. At contribute now yeah talking about search our team and really our um paid search department at local search group is stellar and so we have i think 60 certifications on the different google platforms just amongst our team so um you know we're really proud that's really the meat of our business and what we do really well and um one thing that you know, not only is the industry going into but we're going into is uh, youtube search is the number two search engine owned by Google. So um, a lot of what you do in your videos, I think it's one minute of videos worth a thousand words. And you know, the millennials, the new car buyers are much more engaged by videos. So that's really the future. And that's one thing, you know, at these conferences that we've been going to that all the speakers are um, really speaking about and really pushing to the dealers that 
get your salespeople to make videos, have a YouTube channel, and different things. And Jim talks about it a couple chapters in Cardog Millionaire as well. Um, so that's an exciting, you know, future for the automotive marketing industry and something that we can definitely help dealers with as well. In, if the, dealers next, in the next money. couple of years, 85% of all online content will be video according to three or four yeah. sources. That's about an aggregate 85%. Yeah. I yeah. hate, I hate people that, that, that talk percentages, you know, you <laughs> yeah. know like 7% of the time, right? Yeah. Yeah. 97% yeah, of the time the speaker made the statistic up on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, go on. I've seen some of these car speakers stand on stage and, and start pulling statistics out of their yeah. anatomy. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> they hit it home now. Yeah. But, uh, but aggregately, about 85% of, of all online content will be video. Video has mm -hmm. preference in the search engines. And now, yeah. this, this blab we're doing right now, I keep checking to be sure we're recording. Mm -hmm. I will put this on Facebook. I will put this on LinkedIn. I will put this on YouTube. And all the blabs that I have done similar to this with companies and friends like yourself, we're, we're getting, you know, 15, 16, 18 viewers live, 25 viewers live, 100 viewers live, you know. But then when I put it on these other mediums, we're getting 600 aggregate total viewers. And when you can get 600 people to watch a one hour show, that's phenomenal. Yeah. And the video, my YouTube channel is just rocking. I got one video right now that's got uh, over 500,000 views. Oh, wow. Well, that's is awesome. That, is that cool or what? That is well, fantastic. There's also with YouTube, the whole analytic component of YouTube as well, that they're really, you know, coming from Google, they're really developing their own analytic component. And Jim spoke about that at... Um, digital dealer that was what our whole session was about so do you have some insight from the analytics side of what dealers can take away from youtube ads jim me oh yeah oh yeah the uh um, jim jim did you mean jim ziggler or jim flint jim flint jim jim you mean the uh, alpha dog or the car dog she, she just teamed you up big guy you did, man. i'm about to crush it um <laughs> you know we go to all these events and like Last year in the Driving Sales Innovation Summit, I'm just going to be fair-minded and neutral on this, they have, at the end of the year, kind of the best ideas from the dealerships. And I'll cut to the chase. The best idea in 2015 was a guy who reordered a dealership that reordered their pictures so that the steering wheel was first, right? In this world where if you're not careful, you can turn cars into commodities because there was that routine sequence of all the pictures being in this order, that maybe even uh, auto traders established or cars.com, it really doesn't matter. But the idea was that his most innovative idea was that he took that to the front. And so when I look at that, knowing how much mobile's out there and how much video's out there, YouTube now has an analytics capability to show you as you watch the actual video that you have rolling through where people jump off. And so if you look at it, in terms of absolute viewership, it's going to be this straight line down, right? Because over time you lose viewers. But what you can do is you can do a click of the mouse and see the relative loss. So you could look at it for all the other 30 second videos out there and you can change up the way that your cars are seen and then measure it. And that's what we really do at the end of the day, Jim, is we work with our dealer partners to shift and measure the different dynamics of what's shaping retail automotive. If we can't measure it, we won't do it. And one of the exciting things for me on the video front is YouTube showing me comparatively when people are bailing out. And so if I can make minor adjustments to the effect of the way that this guy did at his dealership, moving the steering wheel to the front or moving the brand name of your dealership to the front if you're doing pre-roll video, because people are bailing out after five seconds. If they bail out after five seconds, they're not gonna see the part about your car and they're not gonna remember who you are. So having something that's impactful at the beginning uh, is very important. Heck, I've even thought, Jim, that on traditional TV, with the DVRs and the TiVos and the zipping and zapping that goes on, maybe what car dealers should do instead of saying, Sunday, 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 sale, 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 maybe they just put their logo, <laughs> right? And their name and a number. So when you're fast forwarding to it, you see a static image instead of a bunch of running footage. Uh, in today's 
you know, go, go, go environment, it's something they ought to consider. Well, I got to tell you, video humanizes the dealership. You know, no doubt. In Internet 1.0 was flat text. I mean, that was that's what we had, text. That, then we got real creative. We had some photographs and text. And then we had video. Video was, was, was kind of slow in the beginning, if you'll recall. You know, remember when you got on the Internet and you had to be sure nobody in the household lifted up the telephone? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, AOL, baby. Yeah. AOL. I still use AOL, but it doesn't, it doesn't go... Yeah. <laughs> anymore. yeah. <laughs> you know, and you know, we but my god, 54 MBS. So my god, well, that's the fastest speed in the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm rocking. It's a rocket. <laughs> I, I remember, yeah, going 2400 to 4800 to 9600. Oh, yeah. You were literally doubling your speed. I mean, it's unreal. 14.8. Yeah. Oh. I mean, oh my god, 14.8. We thought, you know, it, you know, what could you do? Yeah. <laughs> and what about social media? Is social media working good for us? Yes, we just finished the Houston Auto Show, mm -hmm. and we do the social media for them. We do live event activations too. Um, Rachel, you can definitely jump in and share. We just did our closeout meeting with them yesterday. We used Periscope a lot, Jim. We we did. It was a lot of fun to use Periscope at the Auto Show because you know, especially at the live events, it was it's what was happening right that second. It wasn't in the past. It wasn't talking about what we were going to do in the future. It was happening right then. And so it was really exciting to see that part being activated during the auto show. But they, Jim, correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't it 21% of all people that came to the show uh, interacted on social media uh, yes. while they were at the show? Actually, which, it was 21.97%. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very much. I apologize. <laughs> that incorrect. Um, but so it was, it was really exciting because, you know, our team was working very hard on the show. And so to see that that, that percentage of customers or people at the show were engaging on social media, it, it was a lot of fun. We, it was, Facebook has got 2 billion adults and 38% of them are U.S. citizens. Wow. I mean, you know, why do you want to be on Facebook? That's where the people are. Now, Periscope, on the other hand, you know, um, Periscope is one dimensional. It's a, it's a broadcast. That's it. But yeah. I'll tell you, I'll, and, and, you know, Google Hangouts um, would like to be what we're doing right now. What we're doing right now, it's still in the beta, but if this thing ever takes off, this is this is the best format I have seen for, for multi-person discussions. This mm -hmm. is incredible. And if, if this gets out of beta and, and gets mainstream, um, Facebook has got some limited applications of, of live streaming. Live streaming is going to be everything. Mm -hmm. You know, live streaming is, is, is the future. But, Have you but seen I, Facebook starting to get into that? Yeah, they, they've got, but they're selecting who they give it to. I haven't got it yet. And, you know, and I, I hate that because I've got, in, in all the groups and all, I've got several groups and I've got, I don't know how many Facebook fan pages and, public figures right. and like me. I've got- And the tribe, I mean- Oh, no, no, no there's no such thing as a tribe. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, that's an urban myth. Okay. <laughs> we don't exist. We don't speak of it, huh? all right. I do not have a group with 8,000 car members you, in it. Yeah, there is no, no such thing. There, no. Mm, no, no that's we don't talk about that. Sorry, I, I hope that doesn't get me kicked out of a place that doesn't exist. So <laughs> <laughs> throw the key away. No, but anyway, I've got a bunch of groups on Facebook right now. I've got about seventy-five thousand people. You know, I've got two hundred thousand friends and followers on all the social media. Wow. You know, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Yeah, I, I just hit that two hundred thousand. The only guy I know in the car business has more is new car Mark. If you know him. <laughs> Don't know that. I know you've got a Pinterest page too that you kill it with. Oh, the Pinterest is Pinterest is one of the most fascinating social media that nobody uses correctly. My we actually have an awesome social media team, and they rock at Pinterest. And we are, have done it for a lot of our dealer clients. And surprisingly, yeah, it's not a platform you would think would have a lot of engagement in our industry, but. We get we get a lot of followers. The OEMs are really involved in Pinterest as well, and it's a great way to showcase your team, your culture, your cars, you know, your inventory, everything all in one place. So I mean, yeah, Audi, we, Audi's really following us. BMW, I think, is following us. And what we 
we track with Jordan every week where we are on Google when we look up local search group, right? Yeah. To see how we're showing up. And Pinterest has moved um, at certain times all the way up to the number two spot. And so in terms of a dealer who's like looking for complete control of his Google page one, if there's 10 slots and you've got a third party lead provider who owns part of your name, I mean, what better way, Jim, than to have Pinterest, you know, where you get to deliver the message versus being victim more, to somebody else's. More decision. so than that. <clears throat> what, what you got to know about Pinterest is Pinterest, people repin your pins. Are you familiar yes. with how it works? And yeah. when you've got your URL tied to that photograph or that picture that's in Pinterest and somebody repins it and takes it somewhere else, there goes your URL all over the internet mm -hmm. and all of a sudden your SEO is compounded. Now I'm using a little trick on Pinterest. You can also put a URL in the text on the front of the description of the picture. So you can yeah. have two, two URLs in it. Okay. And I'm always, and, so help me, I'm getting 30 and 40 repins every single day. That's wow. awesome. That's I mean, great. and I'm using it as, as a storyboard to sell. Now, there's a dealership in Chillicothe, Missouri okay. called, called Woody's Automotive, W-O-O-D-Y-S. And they, their website is Wild, W-O-W, Woody's. And their Pinterest page is Wild, W-O-W, Woody's. If you look at Pinterest.com forward slash W-O-W Woody's, you will see a car dealership that is killing the Chicago dealerships in this little hick-ass Mayberry town. You know, you know, you wait for Andy and Opie and Barney to show up at any minute, show and Kofi, you know, but I'm telling you right now, they're killing all the Midwest dealers in this little tiny town. But you look at the way they built their whole social structure around um, their Pinterest presence. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. That's interesting. Well, you, I hope you wrote that down. Wow, Woody's. It's, it's wild. Easy to remember. Yeah. Okay, that's, um, and the other thing we can talk about, too, is that I heard Brian Pash talk about it, um, that conference, Carvis Today, about how, yeah, social from an organic standpoint, it's great. Like, we think we're getting all this free advertising and free branding and, you know, getting in front of all these people, but what we need to be doing is checking out all the social advertising platforms at these different Facebook, uh, LinkedIn and it's kind of, you know, but Twitter ads, things like that, um, that we can really, we can put 500 a month to a Facebook ad. And Jim uses this example from one of our clients, $500 to a Facebook ad and increase our lead ratio just because, you know, when people are going to the search engines, yeah, it's important, but that's typically when they're in the shopping phase and they're really okay i know i want a car right now but everyone at some point is going to buy a car people buy a car what every three to five years now so and they're all on social media like you said 38 percent of adults in the us those people will be your customers at some point so it's important to still stay in front of them with the advertising platforms um so we're really excited we're jumping uh -oh. on jumping on that and can you hear me yeah my out no, oh, you're, okay. you're right there. Right. We got you. I kept having audio issues earlier, and I'm like, really? We're not moving waiting. enough for you. <laughs> I'm always eating. <laughs> you got to move, people. Sorry. <laughs> that, that's the trouble. When you, you know, when you get to a phase where everybody's listening to you, it looks like we're all frozen. <laughs> yeah. We're <laughs> mesmerized. We're yeah. Like, yeah. We're not. I'm not I'm Sergio over here says, I think Facebook would focus on groups containing hundreds of people instead of small groups like Blab. Their money is concentrating in a small groups. Why Facebook did not make Blab first? Well, I think he's saying that Facebook should have done this first and yeah. he got his first language. Uh, Sergio is um, evidently one of the people in our overseas dots upstairs. Uh, Sergio, um, Facebook will catch up. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, Facebook has decided they're not going to fund um, Kanye. So. <laughs> <laughs> Let me give you some props there, Jim. <laughs> yeah, I should get some props for that. Yeah, thing. yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Zuckerberg is not Zuckerberg is not going to fund Kanye. You know, poor, poor guy. Crazy. <laughs> but yeah, face, Facebook to me is the bomb. I mean, I, yeah, face, Facebook dark posts are working quite well. And uh, Jim, are you using any of those? 
Not the dark post. You you don't have to tell more about that one. Um, I was going to take it to a different spot. Tell tell me what. Okay, you're well, know where you're going to go. I'll come back. I'm sorry. Go where you're going to go. Yeah, I I think with Facebook, just kind of following up on the the deal about why they're not in Blab first. I think in the last year there's been a development in Facebook. It used to be all about the likers, and I think it's ironic that once their dealers dealerships and dealer principals got their head around it probably a lot because they're competitive, right? They knew how many likes they should have versus their competitors. Well, Facebook at the end of the day is looking to monetize. And so now just because you have a liker doesn't mean that you show up in their feed. In fact, in having some direct conversations with Facebook employees, they've made the decision that they really want your content to be entertaining. It better be something about something maybe other than what your business does or other than what your business has the ability to sell. So you got to be entertaining. And then if even if you are entertaining, the way they're helping you show up in the feed is by boosting the post. And boosting the post is another way of saying paying for exposure, a.k.a. advertising. So. Well, uh, top stick on the side over here said the communities you made on Facebook over the years isn't necessarily the community you want to live stream to. Well, Top State doesn't know Ziggler, I don't think. Um, I've, I've got thousands and thousands of people. What he's talking about is your friends and your community and your Aunt Jenny. But if you look at, at I'm making 35000 a month on my on my personal Facebook page, not, not counting my business pages. And, you know, that's wow. people transacting. I mean... I still have to go perform the services, but people are transacting the services on Facebook. Facebook is my, my number one revenue gener generator of all. You know, Twitter just directs traffic. Mm -hmm. I really have not learned to sell on Twitter yet, but I've learned to move people that follow me on Twitter and send them somewhere that I do make money. Does that make sense, Rachel? Yes, sir, it does. Yeah, I'm using it Rachel. Could, <clears throat> Rachel could tell a Facebook story about um, one of our most successful campaigns we've ever had. It was so successful the dealer told us to turn it off. It was it was it was really funny because um, he wanted he wanted to make some movement on Facebook and he offered a free oil change, and I said okay. <laughs> I don't know that might work a little too well. And after about a week, his service director came to the general manager and said. I don't know what you're doing, but stop. I've, he had over 5,000 people call and ask about this free oil change. Well, you know, so, Rachel, I've been doing the, the car, I'm gonna like, I, I interrupted you, but I've been doing the car business 39 years. Yeah, it's since 1976, oh my gosh. <laughs> but, yeah, anyway, and, and I ran an ad in El Dorado, Arkansas. When I, I had a million dollar contract with Ford Motor Company, I was consulting the minority program and some other, I was on all the Ford Company training videos. And it was kind of interesting because I ran an ad in the local paper, El Dorado, Arkansas. We're talking serious ass Mayberry again. <laughs> little, tiny, little tiny town. I ran an ad and, and the ad was a full page and the headline just read, absolutely free. 80, okay. pi 80 pikers, absolutely free. And then the subtitle, 40 pikers, no tricks, no come ons, no gimmicks. And then again, absolutely free. <laughs> free oil change to any mode owner of a Ford Motor Company product, up to five quarts and filter, with a free 22 point mechanical inspection of your car for spring. Did you get every Ford customer in town? Yeah, anybody that owned a Ford, no matter what year it was, free oil change, 21 point inspection of your car. We sold upwards of two hours of additional service off of the 21 point mechanical inspection. It, that was designed to upsell service. Yeah. And yeah. they made a fortune on that. That's they, wonderful. They were scheduling appointments three weeks after the ad ran. Wow. But see, the oil change in itself was not a profit maker. But exactly. when, you, when you tie in the free 21 point mechanical inspection of your car for spring, mm -hmm. Jim, you just get an idea there? <laughs> yeah no doubt i mean it's funny when you talk to we, we work so much in the pay-per-click space and i had this conversation with a dealer yesterday out of uh, michigan and he wanted to know what to do on the service drive and there's all there's this moment of truth because dealers know they make more money on the service drive but in google land 
we we can get a new car click for a dealer name. Let's call it a dollar to two dollar range. You can get a new car click on a branded term like Honda Accord or Toyota Camry in the call it three to seven, depending upon how competitive the market might be. But throw out a thing like oil change, and because Manny Mo and Jack are in play, now you're upwards of thirty and thirty two dollars for a nineteen ninety five <laughs> oil change. Yeah, and that's like a bottle rocket. That's not a really fun conversation. Because those guys at those stores, you know, the do-it-yourself kind of handyman stores, Pet Boys are are willing to sacrifice that lost leader to keep the business. And more and more dealers are doing it with oil changes for life and things of that nature. But when it comes to advertising on the service drive, I think most dealers kind of think of Google as a new car expense. And they, uh-oh, did we lose Jordan there? Uh -huh. I bet you she'll be right back. Jordan. Am I back? Jordan, are you there? Yeah. Restroom break? What? 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 <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, service is kind of an untapped place to play, but it's an expensive place to play because it's so comparatively profitable. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that there's a one size fits all, but I will tell the dealer partners that I'm working with, you know, maybe chasing after the oil change isn't the way to go. You know, in conversations I've had through the years with guys like Kevin Fry. You know, it's going after and writing SEO articles on the higher margin repair orders for transmission repairs, for brake repairs, and then, you know, making sure on the oil change side that you do things closer to home, but then in the bigger picture, you know, being relevant with the information that's available. Jordan's back. Sorry. You yeah, can carry on. You know, you know it's, it's amazing because content on, on a website today is so important. Um, a lot, lot of video content, a lot of blog content. Um, you know, articles on, on how to repair your car. Um, I, I had a dealer that bought, for his market, check engine light. Okay. Oh. <laughs> you know, you, what, you, you know and, and I'm looking for check engine, check engine light dot com, Dallas dot com, check engine light Dallas dot com or something like, you know, <laughs> you know some of the, the things that people would look for. Mm -hmm. It's amazing to me that if you put in repair search words of any kind in in the in the Google, which is the the god of search engines, dealerships aren't coming up. Local gas stations are knocking you off. It's it's incredible that a service our highest profit business. We're advertising sales and and sales um, truthfully on new cars are, are a lost leader. Yeah, and you know it's funny too, Jim. Like. We'll track phone calls because everything now is the mobile phone. I don't know if, uh -huh. Jordan, do you have your mobile phone? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do a little free advertising, Jim. We need to get you one of these. See on the back side? I'll get a green thing? Yeah. Yeah, a little car dog millionaire. Yeah, Maybe we get you an alpha dog one. Oh, wow. Well, alpha dog one. Why not? We should. I mean, it's great. I mean, more people stop me in the airport. Do you, do you, have, a, do you have a Jim Flint bobblehead? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> I don't tell many people that, man. The Canadian <laughs> dealers gave me that. Really? I'm not sure it's safe for exposure outside of my closet upstairs. It's I've got I've got a Jim you know Ziegler bobblehead actually. Yeah. Is it out there on your desk? No, no, it's it's about ten feet away. Hang on. Let's Talk. see. Yeah, let's see what it is. Talk. It's gonna go get it. We need one for our office. You know, Jim's been invited to speak at our office, so I hope he takes us up on that when he comes in. Yeah. Marks for the internet battle plan. But, oh, um, look at it. Get a close up. Okay, here we go. All right, rock and roll. Let's see. I was, I was telling about your standing up. Oh. <laughs> 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 he needs awesome. a hat. Yeah, I was going to say, he wears his hat. <laughs> well, he didn't, I didn't have a hat when he had this made. This, this Bob Woods about eight That's years old. That's great. That's but, awesome. But, there's a company called the Bobble Factory that makes bobbleheads. Mm -hmm. I'm about to have the Bobble Factory make another. You know, it costs about you know five six thousand dollars to have the first batch made. You know, you have to have the photographs done and the three hundred and sixty degree. But yeah, I want to have a Alpha Dog bobblehead made. But I'm talking yeah. to the bobblehead people right now. Cool. Hey, and I was telling the team that yeah, you thought you walked nice away, trainer. Ain't, ain't no damn Joe Verde bobbleheads. <laughs> <laughs> no. You, you are invited to come to our, I know we talked about this offline, but just sharing for everybody, you're invited to come to the local search group offices in Houston, kind of talk with our 
team, if you have time, I know you're very busy, but we'd be honored to have you kind of come in, say hi, and deliver a speech. Um, our team knows who you are, and we follow you, and we appreciate what you do for the industry. I've been at different uh, conferences where you've received like the Lighthouse Award for the industry. I know at least one or two. I, I just thanks for all you do for the car business, Jim. I just want to say thank, that. Thank you. It's it's amazing. You know, the last three years, everybody's giving me lifetime achievement awards. Like they're <laughs> like they're like they're, put, like they're like they're pushing me out the door. Hey, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, no, we want to welcome you in, man. So, so, so many on. people talking about me in the past tense. Hey, man, I made two million dollars last year working with dealerships. I'm not done. <laughs> <laughs> you know. All right, so I got to share this though for the dealers out there because we got sidetracked for a second. Yeah, we did. They we we track phone calls, and because of the mobile phones, everybody uses this. Like we're driving lots of phone calls to our dealer partners, and when you listen to the calls, Jim. 25 to 40% of them will be for the service drive. And so if you're a GM and you're hearing this, you might be short-minded and think, well, I'm spending my new car money on the service drive and I've been spending $10,000. And I've had GM say this to me. And what I tell them back is, look, you're running a departmental income statement. Your guys that are running service are getting paid on the profitability of that department. If they're getting 40% of the calls on a $10,000 investment, then you need to put 4,000 of the advertising expense to them and then increase your total spend. Smile pretty. Everybody Great smile. Smile and say, Alpha Dog. Alpha, Alpha Dog. Alpha dog. <laughs> yeah, I got a picture of us broadcasting. That's so cool. <laughs> That's too good. Yeah, That's that too, is good. too good. Yeah, but anyway, phone calls. I have a, a saying, and this is, and you know, I don't use statistics, you know. In my world, I'm not analytical. And what are the first four letters of the word analytics? <laughs> you know? <laughs> that I mentioned, um, Laura so, Davis, our VP of sales, um, she's a little OCD and she's very good at analytics. And I pointed that out to her one day. <laughs> yeah, the first four letters. Yep, yep, yep. But anyway, I'm not analytical. But I think 90% or more. Another statistic, but I think, my, I think I pulled it right out of my anatomy. I think ninety, I think ninety percent or more of of statistics uh, would say that most deals that are blown in a car dealership are blown because somebody mishandled the telephone. You you know, search engine land. They're about Google, right? And I hate stats. I get it, but they said twenty to thirty percent of the calls that come in off of. In the auto, so it's somebody outside of automotive looking into automotive, but they said twenty to thirty percent of the calls don't get handled properly in the dealership. You, no. I mean, when you go talk to dealerships, you've got, I mean, it's almost where we have to start anymore. There, I know Elise Kephart, you're you're familiar with and fond of her, right? She's pretty good at what she does. Is that fair? She's my, she's the YouTube diva. Yeah, yeah. I discovered at least. What are you talking about? I'm, just, I'm teeing you up, Jim. I'm oh, just saying. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she She's great. And she talks about phone skills and how important they are. And there's other great uh -huh. phone ninjas and other guys out there that do great things. But um, she's one of the best. And it's almost like a back to the basics. As far out as we get with the Internet, now that you can do everything on your phone, it's time to be able to talk. Because even Gen Y, when they want to get something done, that's when they pick up the phone. You know, Otherwise, you better take the door. It's amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. Nobody, nobody understands most deals that are blown in a car dealership are blown because the consumer can't connect with the person they're trying to reach. And mm -hmm. I and a lot of that's receptionists. I think the receptionists blow an incredible amount of deals in a car dealership because they don't connect to people. See, most receptionists somehow believe it is their job to get the people to voicemail. Which we know what happened. That's a black hole. People don't talk to voicemail. Consumers hang up on voicemail. And you know, I, I see a lot of managers that think they're so damn smart that they, they try to let all their calls go to voicemail. And, and the consumer doesn't talk to voicemail. They call the next dealership. You know, well, take, also, take your calls. You know, the implement of chat and text, text me now that has become so important on websites as well. Because even though people love to make a phone call, I mean, especially with millennials, 
text me. <laughs> I don't even want to talk to you. I just want you to text me or I want to chat with you. You had yeah. a cat's butt in the picture just now. There's a cat running around. <laughs> <laughs> now you got the whole cat. <laughs> I, I saw the little tail like flying around, and apparently there is a door open, and they have come back inside. <laughs> <laughs> you might be the alpha dog, but I am the queen cat lady. Uh, <laughs> you saw my floor. Did, did you see that that thing on my Facebook page? How to wash your cat? No, but I'm going to have to. Take okay, that out. you take the cat and you soothe it, and you lift up the toilet seat, put it in the toilet. <laughs> With, with a little soap in there and stand on the lid because it, it'll agitate itself. And we'll have a, we'll not, oh my we'll goodness. Oh, clean goodness. Cap, we have the cleanest toilet in town. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll watch that. I might not take that advice. <laughs> but I'll definitely check that out. So, oh, I'm sorry. Apologies. <laughs> Uh, I have a tendency to get silly sometimes, but this, 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 is, a, we're, this is a very informative broadcast, I think. Yeah, yeah, you were talking about you know, texting. Tim, I was I was going to ask Jordan how she she dealt with the phone calls at the dealership, right? Because there's this idea that Gen Y doesn't like the phone, but you had to have Lexus customers calling you, right? I mean, yeah, and of course, on a slow day, you know, when people aren't walking in the dealership, you just make calls all day. So I would make like twenty cold calls a day. So I think that is a little. I mean, I'm not your atypical millennial in that regard. I don't mind the phone at all, but um, yeah, especially Lexus, just with some of the models have an older demo and they prefer to talk on the phone. So you just got to do what makes your customer comfortable and tailor yourselves that way. There, there but, is an excellent blab that I did with Scott Peckstein at the time. You know, you know Scott Peckstein from Auto by Tell? Auto by Tell, yeah. Yeah, sure. he, he is probably one of the most great, great, great texting experts for a layman's point of view. He spoke at it several NADAs. And he and I have a blab at, at you'd see blab.im forward slash Jim Ziegler. Mm -hmm. A blab very much like this one. And it, it's archived there and on YouTube where you can see where Scott Peckstein and I talked about the legalities of, of blabbing. There's a lot of legal pitfall, pitfalls there. And I mean, how you do it. A lot of the vendors right now, you got to be careful. A lot of the vendors are using free texting to steal dealers' data. And I'm not going to name any any one of them that I think is doing this because I can't prove it. And they, they might be doing it. They might not. Edmunds.com. But anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not going to name anybody. But um, okay. I, 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 would, I would not. I would not take free texting from anybody. Um, if it's part of your CRM I, and you're paying for it, that that's one thing, you know, but I'd be very leery if a vendor was taking my data and using free texting as a smoke screen to do that. Because data theft right now is incredible. That data is, is, is currency mm -hmm. in the car business and texting. No email has become so ineffective. You know, people, you know, they're so spammed or they're, they're, they just tuned it out like TV commercials. But on the other hand, texting, texting, everybody answers their text. Everybody opens, everybody looks at them, everybody reads them. But you've got to have a complete legal opt in. And there are ways to do that. And you, I, you know, Jim, you, we, yeah. and I've heard some of this, I think, even may come from, from Scott, who is very knowledgeable on the subject. But you're better off having a signed napkin from a cocktail at happy hour for an opt-in than you are to getting a texted opt-in because consumers can say that their kid did it or their uncle did it or their brother did it or their sister did it. And you watch these lawyers who come out and, and Lithia got tagged on this. I'm not saying Lithia did anything wrong. They just were on the wrong side of a class action lawsuit where... Yeah. They, they cost them millions of dollars because they were blasting out. So unless you have permission from the consumer, you know, its effectiveness is unquestionable. But but be smart about it in terms of communicating. Because One the, of the football teams here, just got hit for millions. Who was it? For, for, and I don't know which football team. Uh, Peck's team was telling me one of the pro teams oh, got really? hit for, for millions for texting. And um, – Opting in is not what people think it is. I, 
I talk to car people. I, I, I probably talk to two, three, four hundred car people a week. And what people think is is opting in is not legal. Well, I'm going to tell you what, 90 percent. I don't know. Another statistic. Uh, <laughs> right, right out. You need yeah. sound effects. You need yeah. sound effects that you just hit. Yeah. <laughs> Another statistic: ninety percent or more of people in the car business aren't legally opted in when they're texting these people. And they believe they are. And please go to that blab, uh, blab.im forward slash Jim Ziegler. Look up the texting blab and and spend an hour of your time and listen to that blab and find out what you need to do because we haven't got time to do it on this blab but um let's get back to we've got uh, six minutes left let's talk about local search group what services do you offer let's get specific we've we've been entertaining we've been informational uh we we're, we're such attractive people <laughs> yeah. and you're wearing green today too thanks jim i, I found some green i mean only green i got yeah. I, you know, we do three things, and so I'm going to start with one of them, and then I'll turn it over to the other two team members on the call today. I'll start with that sissy pastel green now. I know. <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, this, hey, brother, I'm in Atlanta, and Laura and Jordan, it looks like Laura was able to, to sneak onto the call. She says, hey, Alpha Dog. They were wearing green. I went out to Joseph A. Banks in the snow in Atlanta to get this shirt, so say what you wow. will, but I went okay. with the green. We're going okay. green, but we do search engine marketing, which is Google, Yahoo, Bing, and have an orientation towards retail. It's the now part of a now business. And so we've done the inventory feed better than the other vendors did when I was working at the dealership, which fundamentally helped us create this company. I'll leave it at that. Um, if, if you can't do it today, it, it really isn't helpful in automotive retail. That's one of the things we do. Rage, if, or, if Laura's if Laura's still on the show, Laura, put put the URL in in the, the sidebar for the group. There you go, oh, local search group. I didn't even realize that was weird. That's there we go. And of course, I've got the Internet Battle Plan coming up in Houston, Texas, and that's going to be March 9th and tenth. We've got twenty experts on stage. We've got some of the best people in the car business, every aspect of internet sales and marketing, including. The star in the upper left hand is, I guess you're in everybody's upper left hand, Mr. Jim Flint himself. <laughs> and the divas on the screen will be there at the event. And I'm telling you right now, the internet battle plan is going to be at the Double Tree Hotel, the website, <laughs> internetbattleplan.com. Oh, divas, give me some of that diva. All the divas. <laughs> Laura, Laura, Laura's going to be there too. Uh, oh, Laura, Laura's the original diva. I got, I got, I, yeah, I, just, I, met, I met you two cents, you know. <laughs> OG Diva. There you go. We'll all be there. OG Diva. <laughs> and, you know, and, and, you know, like, I guess, uh, with all these beautiful divas on screen, uh, Jim, you and I are like the sorbet that cleanses the palate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this has been a fun show. Did you guys have fun, uh, Rachel? I did. I did. Thank yeah. you for having us. Oh, yeah. Laura pointed out green is the color of money. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm all about money, you know. I've, I've, I've been rich and I've been poor, and I made a decision. Being poor sucks. I gave it a fair <laughs> shot. I didn't like it. I tried it. <laughs> I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> no, <laughs> no that was fun. Being poor sucks. That's why. That, that's something I, I, I wake up every day remembering. De Debbie, and I did something really cool this week. Really cool. You ready? Was that? Yeah. What was that? Yesterday. We paid off the house. Woo! You, I got your dog. Somebody, somebody's dog barking on that. No. <laughs> Let the dogs out. Who told you that? Yeah. We paid off the house yesterday. That's, Congrats, wow. man. 10,000 square feet. Casa the Alpha Dog. We own it. Nice. <laughs> That's wonderful. Oh, That's first a celebration. Time, first time you. we ever did that. <laughs> you know. You know, I'm no Grant Cardone billionaire, but I I do own Casa Alpha Dog. Well, now you can take that, put it towards 10% down on your next house, right? Or 20 now. It used to be 10%. Well, um, you know, we could buy it cash if we felt like it. But it's, it's the thing, you know, there will be a, yeah, I always wanted a 10,000 square foot house. Always. That was my goal. To, now, my goal was to get a 2,500 square foot house. <laughs> 
You should be like on MTV Cribs or have a lab. How am I going to maintain maintain this thing if if, if Trump runs all the immigrants out? Oh my God! Uh, <laughs> I mean, my, my, yeah, I, I, I love, I love, I love my, my, my people that are helping me out here. You, my gosh! <laughs> yeah, they're great. <laughs> yeah, but they're anyway. Great. Oh, Jim. <laughs> well, I, you dress me up. You can't take me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, we're gonna. I'm gonna stop the recording. Five, four, three, two, one. Bye.